Welcome to the Veterinary Project Podcast, episode 020. Welcome to the show created by vets featuring absolutely no pets. This is the Veterinary Project Podcast, hosted by Dr. Michael Bug and Dr. Jonathan Light. Our resident veterinarians have swapped out their stethoscopes in favor of microphones to bring you the Veterinary Project Podcast, a show focused on real conversations aimed to connect this amazing profession full of remarkable people. Through the sharing of collective stories and wisdom and connecting over the many unique challenges we face, we invite you to join our community of veterinary professionals leading intentional lives. And now, here are the hosts of the Veterinary Project Podcast, Dr. Michael Bug and Dr. Jonathan Light. Welcome to the Veterinary Project Podcast with yours truly, finishing out 2020, Dr. Michael Bug and Dr. Jonathan Light. Mikey, how you doing? Fantastic, Jonathan. Feel like I answer that way every time. Crazy, crazy to think this is the end of 2020. When this episode goes out, it's going to be mid-December, r- ramping right into the holiday season. The I don't know. I keep referring to it as like the COVID time warp. Like, where did that year go? Isn't that the case? We're into December already. There's a lot on the palette for everybody right now. We're already looking forward into what hopefully could be a great 2021 for the world. And yet here we are on the Veterinary Project podcast, another 10 episodes in the bag. And this next 20, 25 minutes is to go through the goods, the bads, as well as what's coming up with Dr. Michael Bug and Dr. Jonathan Light. Our goal in the next 25 minutes is to not bore you, is to lead you with amazingness, enthusiasm, but also the realistic perspective of what has been a very, very quick last three months. We literally just went into episode 11 at the start of October. And as Mike and I reviewed in this past while, what's happened in the last 10 episodes, there's been a couple of very interesting themes that have arisen. Don't you think, Mike? Yeah, I, I went back and listened to episode 10 and then all of the episodes just sort of binged, listened to them. Um, even just for the, for the guests, I guess, once we record an episode, I don't know about you, Jonathan, but I shelf it, you know, cause you put, you're, you're there, you're recording, you're going through pulling the content. I never listen to them once they're actually live and produced. So this was my first time going back and, and re listening, revisiting to, to all those. Nice. It's a lot of work, isn't it? I was just pulling up that Spotify wrap of 2020 for podcast uh, recording artists. I don't know what they call us. Uh, 841 minutes recorded and provided to our public listeners over the last six months now. That uh, in itself makes it a hard task to go through them all one by one. But I do know that we have multiple listeners out there that will say, oh, looking forward to this week. Oh, li- looking forward to hearing who you guys are bringing on next. Who's the next sucker for punishment? It's been fun. So kudos to you for going back and binge listening. Um, yes, it's similar for me after, you know, you go through the production standpoint and editing, et cetera, that we've talked about. Yeah, you, you definitely shelf it for a bit, which then makes it even more fun when you go to listen to it a couple of weeks later. I just did that with uh, Dr. Laura Nadelman's episode. Really enjoyed it. I know that was a lot of fun one. And uh, Dr. Jennifer Cole, another one there that we, we've got to get her back on. That was an enjoyable, funny, fun episode. <laughs> That one was, and I had never met Jen, like j- jumping in 10 minutes before we're going to start recording, you meet for the first time. And it was, it was like we somehow had known each other in a previous life or something, because just so easy uh, to talk to. And that's so fun. That's my favorite part, obviously, is when we're, when, when we're sitting there with the guest. And then the conversations that happen after we turn record off. I mean, we've, we talk with most guests for at least half an hour to an hour more than the episode it just seems to happen that way that's true because we've now built that rapport up you feel like you have that connection if not that relationship that already exists and you know for anybody who's listening here for 2021 we're going to be trying to bring some of that content uh to you and in different formats and you know we've got some plans here we want to share with you but you know shout out 
send a comment. You know, we, we want to hear more from you guys and we want to interact more with you guys as to what you're like and what you're not. Uh, you know, as we were talking about, even before this episode, you know, just started to be recorded. Uh, it's amazing to hear from anybody that reaches out. Uh, Morgan just did that last night again. Great to hear from her again. And again, we're putting her out there on the spot, but it's awesome to see. So we really appreciate it. Um, but going back to the themes of the last 10 episodes, we're not going to do the same as what we did in episode 10. Uh, we're going to keep it more tight for your guys' benefit, again, so you don't get bored. But there was definitely a theme that came out, and we realize that now as a result of Michael's binge listening. Tell us a little bit about what that theme was, Mike. Well, yeah, there was a couple themes. First, I, I have to open with, um, it wasn't so much a theme as it was one specific event that kind of uh slapped me in the face incredible learning and there is there is kind of a message i guess and a theme in there so i'm referring to the episode with devin um, i believe it was part two of of devin's uh two-part episode and i would make a terrible lawyer i guess because i asked devin a question uh, I guess as a lawyer, you should always know the answer to every question you're going to ask. And I asked Devin something to the effect of uh, what would he say to someone that is wallowing in self-pity over something that isn't that significant, right? So this is following going through all of Devin's story. And in my head, what I'm thinking is Devin is going to come back with something to the effect of, you know, put things in perspective. It's not that big of a deal you know, like don't sweat the small stuff, something of that nature. And Devin comes back with and just completely takes me to school. And I learned so much. So if you're listening, thank you, Devin. Um, and he says, you know, if it's a big deal to them, then it's a big deal. And I, I remember it just floored me because I was like, Devin is just playing at a different level. You know, he is levels higher than I am on sort of that empathy and having that perspective. And I had that immediate like shift in perspective and immediate learning. And I told J Jonathan about this and I was kind of relating it. Like, how does this relate to veterinarians and to the vet world? And I was thinking in the vet clinic, uh, thinking back to practice, we always have to remember everyone has a different perspective. And so, you know, the ones that come to example is the, the, the client that comes in with a dog and it has a tick on it and the ticks engorged. And they're losing their mind because their dog has a lump and that lump is cancer, right? That's just where they go, completely different perspective. The veterinarian that's seen this 5,000 times, we calmly, we don't even set our coffee down. We just pluck the tick off and we're like, there, we've solved the problem. <laughs> totally different perspectives, right? Yep. The other one Jonathan and I were chatting about is the... Yep. Torn toenail. Torn, torn toenail. Yep. Fresh comes in bleeding like crazy and they're losing it, right? Your client's all up in arms and you know, my dog's dying or there's just blood all over the white fluffy. Cause that's exactly the type of dog that comes in this way. And you look at it and you're like, yeah, torn nail. And Isn't that, that true? Yeah, it's mandatory. Torn nail. They have to have white fur to, to, to tear their, their nails and bleed. They got to be white. Yeah. And, and so, so that, you know, that, that like perspective and thinking about it, I mean, I thought about that every day for two weeks following that recording. Um, so huge learning. And then Jonathan, you were, you were talking about this, you know, pull it out of the vet clinic now and, and throw it into real life right now, COVID, like 2020 and, and the shifts in perspective that, that you've seen. Yeah, that's it. Like we're chatting about this with our managers and, and speaking on, you know, stress is lift. It, it's higher right now. And everybody is going through COVID in this situation in a different way, in a different fashion with different backing. And we have to respect that. And, you know, for us in our business right now, you know, the stress is high feeling it myself as well. You know, we got a phone call last night and, you know, things have changed in our own household here for the next couple of weeks. And that just ramps everything up. And so when somebody's maybe not on their A game, maybe not thinking a hundred percent to what's going on in the clinic because they have personal matters at hand, what are we doing to help them? And that's, that's a big deal in 2020, but it should be a big deal all the time. 
and to perspective, that's, um, it, it's again, making me think a little bit different on, on those pieces in life where we have to recognize other people's feelings, emotions, and perspective. Yeah. And it's a tricky one coming into the holidays. You know, if, if that's something you celebrate, I know our families, extended families right now, we've got, you have all these different smaller families trying to decide, are we coming together? How do we come together? Can we even legally, yeah. you know, provinces are locking down. Um, what does that look like? And then you have to take, okay, this is how Rosalie and I feel our family is going to behave and how we want to protect Riley. And then we have to sort of marry that and balance that with, you know, her sister's family, my brother's family, our, our, both of our parents' family. And what does that look like? Like all these different perspectives come clashing together. Really and, crazy time of year. And you asked us specifically, you said, you know, how are you and Candace dealing with this? Right. Which was a great question, which could be a completely different manner in which you and Rosalie would deal with it. And it doesn't matter one bit. It, it doesn't matter in the sense of your perspective is just as right as my perspective in this situation. Just how we approach it might be completely different. Somebody, um, one of our guests actually, and I'm just trying to bring it up right now on my phone. So Dr. Robin Hanley Defoe, she has a great Instagram and one of her recent posts was talking about and, and maybe the flipping the switch again as we go into holidays here is in the simplicity of this all. So for certain provinces, as Mike has said, we're in lockdown. So technically in Alberta, you're not allowed to have somebody outside of your immediate family over the Christmas holidays now. They just came up with that this week and that's so sad and so disappointing. Robin in her post talks about maybe this is an opportunity where we have to take a step back and instead of the rush, the shopping, the going five different places, we can simplify our lives share to the best of our degree or in our ability within ourselves and our immediate family, get onto the Zoom calls, the virtual calls, but really think and be conscious and active in your day-to-day, -day, simplify things for the next few weeks and see what happens. And maybe that brings down the stress and actually is a blessing to your life going forward. Yeah. I'm, we didn't really discuss this coming in, but for, for me, when you say that, when COVID hit, I remember back in March, April, you know, the feelings were a little more intense because there was more fear because we didn't know what was going on. Um, that was the, uh, the theme that emerged for me and our family right away was simplicity, right? We had, all, we had so much stuff going on and all these plans of like, okay, expand and grow and do more and blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, all this hits and everything paused and com comes down. You know, there's no more... You're not having 10 coffee meetings a week and running all over to every appointment. And I mean, we had Riley and like swimming lessons and all these events and everything just stopped. Right. Yeah. And we were like, you know what? This is actually pretty awesome to just hang out at home, like as a family at, you know, so that was a huge theme of, of 2020 that emerged for me was simplicity. You know, I'm, 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 I'm craving it, I guess I would say. And you're very good at it. Love it. Yeah. Excellent. What was another theme that came through Mike over these last 10 episodes and how do they relate to, or how does it relate to us going forward? So another uh, major theme, we saw this with every guest. We can, we can find it in every episode at different points in their journey. Um, and Jennifer Cole just pointed it out and called it for what it is. She said opportunities to reinvent yourself. Um, and with Tanasia Crocker, um, she talked about it as shifting identity. So that kind of theme that as, as our guests were moving through their life and moving through their career, you know, at different points, they either reinvented themselves, they shifted their identity. Um, and that was such a cool thing to see, you know, because all these guests that we bring on, we, we consider them because they, they are leaders in the veterinary profession, you know, and it can be pretty easy if you're on the outside looking in to put, put them on a pedestal, put anyone on a pedestal and be like, wow, they've got it made. Like, look what they're doing. You know, they've got everything totally. figured out. Yep. And we forget about the fact that they went through a good amount of adversity and challenges and their own struggles to get there. 
you know, and we, we didn't plan that out. It's only after we look back, we're like, man, every single guest had that same story. Correct. And had to persevere and didn't even, and, and you mentioned this in our pre-recording, Mike, they didn't even know what sometimes those next steps were going to be, but they decided to consciously make that move anyways. And we've had some success. A couple of our listeners have reached out and say, Hey, John and Mike, just want to give you a heads up because of the episodes and listening to a certain individual, I went and did X. I talked with my boss and actually got an increase in a raise, which is going to help me in my quality of life. Amazing. Yeah. That's a but huge, all amazing. 10 of our last guests have had that same piece as a theme. And isn't that something we hear so much in veterinary medicine? I'm stuck in my place. It's a bad culture. I'm not happy where I am. All very valid points. You have to sometimes make that first step forward, no, acknowledging you're not going to know exactly where it is going to take you. Having trust, we're a smart group of individuals. We know that for a fact. We can make this work. Surround yourself with great people. Make it happen. Yeah, and I think in Jen's episode, she said something along the lines of, you know, if you're in that, those situations, you, you really have two choices. You either accept it or change something within yourself, you know, to change the situation. That's right. And she said, if you accept it, no problem, accept it, enjoy it. Why not? There's certain times in life you have to do that. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah. It was great to hear that from her. Yeah. Yep. And then the other thing that, that came out obviously, because, because they're all where they are now is when they're faced with these sort of difficult situations or adversity or, or making a choice or a decision that's difficult, they would come out on the other side better, right? Like on the other side of every risk was an improved quality of life once they got through that. Look at Lauren Edelman. She took an internship in critical care, even though she had you know, no idea before that came forward as a possibility for North Carolina State as being a place she was going to be. And in the end, you know, got an internal med specialist residency as a result of it. Yeah. That's guts. It is. And I, I, I listened to hers, uh, one of the last ones, because it was later. And she said, I'm not laughing at her. I'm laughing at how like real and vulnerable it was. And that's another, another sort of theme that I'm seeing is, you know, the vulnerability yeah. when people put it out there. Um, but Lauren had said something along like she, she didn't get placed. And you'd ask her, well, what did you do with that? And she said, cried. You know, I sat down and I cried for a day. And it's like, you know, that's okay. It's okay. You, you yeah. suffer these setbacks, you get, you get whacked, you get knocked down, you fail, whatever it is, you know, take a moment, regroup, but know that, you know, on the other side of that, like you're on the path to somewhere great. So true. Nothing more to add to that. That's just great. Yeah. Nice. Last theme that we pulled out over the last 10 episodes there, Mike, was there another one there? I believe there was. Uh, yeah, there was one thing we wanted to touch on. It's going back to Lauren again. Um, and, you know, we saw this in our first block of uh, episodes. I believe uh, Melanie Bowden had, had touched on this is we teach others and we teach clients how to treat us. So I know we've said that before on this podcast. I know our guests have said that before. Yep. Uh, we kind of felt we just wanted to bring it up again because that is really part of the path forward, right? Is the, the industry, there's, there's so many areas that, of things that can happen. And that's one of those that, that needs to happen individually and collectively. I think that's fantastic. And that's one that actually really hit home. We've already had a couple of client concerns since that episode specifically was recorded where it was much easier literally to make that decision on what we're going to do with this client in this client complaint based on how do we expect our clients to treat us and what are we going to do in terms of training our clients? It, it actually was a lot easier in one of the two cases that client got fired yeah. and that, and again, not thinking twice about it afterwards because that's the right move to make. And if the client wants to come back at a later date, fantastic. But the expectations for how they treat our staff will be completely different. Absolutely. And I was just yep. thinking, I'd, great learnings. I'm not going to pull it up because it'll take too long to find it. But Doug, our podcast producer, uh, Doug is not in the veterinary world. 
And he, he goes through all the episodes and he went through Lauren's episode. And then he texts me and Jonathan and he's like, guys, I had absolutely no clue what veterinarians have to like deal with and go through, you know, cause Lauren was walking through yeah. what actually happens behind the scenes. That's not client facing. You know, when the client's gone home, what is she actually still doing on that case? And he was floored by it. You know, he said, I had no idea how much more goes into it that I don't get to see. Yeah. And it's something we have to continue to think about is how do we show our value and in what ways can we show our value to our public and to the clients that are coming in to see us that, Hey, when they're just coming in for the 20 minute or 30 minute appointment, all of the additional work that goes on behind the scenes through our teams through our front teams, whether it's front teams, back teams, veterinarians, to make that client's experience as best as possible, hopefully to the good of their, you know, cat or dog or otherwise. Yeah. Yep. That was a great point. So Mike, we're 20 episodes in. Are we done? Like, is that the end of the Veterinary Project yep. podcast? Close it down. Thanks for tuning in. Guys, it's been a blast. You know, see us on the flip side somewhere. No, no, no. No. We're only getting started, right? We've got some tightening of the ship. We talked about that in episode 10. We're talking about it more in episode 20. We continue yeah. to move and evolve and learn uh, like any relationship, like any podcast co-hosts. We've got our pros and cons for each yeah. of us and we continue to evolve. Uh, we're really excited about the content that we are strategizing to bring forward to everyone in 2021. Uh, a little bit of a... Um, a little bit of a sneak peek. What do we have in the old brain set for thoughts going forward, Mike? <laughs> You're putting me on the spot. Well, uh, I'll, I'll join you on that spot. Don't worry. It's only, it's not only you. So, you know, I have started reaching out to a few uh, expert guests that mm -hmm. I would like to get on. I'm not going to say names. Uh, well, number one, maybe they, they, they won't come on the podcast. Who knows? <laughs> uh, but I, this one. Who knows? <laughs> I want it to be uh, a surprise. Um, you know, we talked in episode 10, like what our swim lanes are. Obviously for me, you're going to get the money, the personal development, personal finance, personal growth, that kind of stuff. Um, yep. so those are guests that I'm reaching out. Um, yeah. And I, I know Jonathan, like with you, you were, you're going to dive into, you know, hopefully the business, business, the finance, yeah. Operations, running of clinics, et cetera. Um, uh, yeah, definitely. You're, you're going to get a little bit more taste of my new clinic that is, now almost a hundred percent finalized and in the hopper for startup. So that is excellent news as well, of which Mike's been pushing me to share more content on. So we are, we are there. You said once uh, it's officially inked, right? You can, you can finally start sharing all the goods with everyone. Oh, there's, he's all I could show. For anyone that's on YouTube, or if you're not on YouTube, he just flashed a contract. So I think we're getting very close to where we're actually going to see uh, some construction and a clinic is going to open. So re in real time, uh, we'll get to go through, I guess, that's like the, the growing pains, the learning curves of a full build out startup clinic, you know, and, and hear it from Jonathan's perspective. That is correct. Yep. And that's a signed contract, not just a contract template. Oh, it's signed. Nice. It signed. Nice, nice, nice. Um, so yeah, and then, I mean, the other thing I want to say, it kind of calls Jonathan and I out a little bit, is going back to episode 10, you know, we talked about a few things we were planning to do for Q4 2020. 2020 <laughs> and I was like, oh shit, man. Like, we haven't done any of them. You know, like, so, I mean, <laughs> When you look at it, um, I mean, there's different thoughts that I have in there. Uh, obviously, success and growth is not a straight line. And on some of those metrics, for a whole quarter, we're just completely flat, right? Like, I thought yeah. we would be rolling out more social media stuff, website yeah. rolling, uh, that's, that kind of stuff coming online. We're a bit, we're delayed on that. Um, and that kind of got you and I into a conversation on, you know, seasons of life. Yes. Where, where everyone is at. And, and that exists personally. It exists in businesses. And then those things overlap, right? You have, I mean, I, I call this more of a passion project, but we take a passion project, 
You have you're launching a business. We both have family, excuse me, families. I have a real estate business. All that has to overlap and and work out together in harmony. So are we suckers for punishment? We are, I guess. See this and this is I don't have a fully formed thought. So so live on a podcast probably isn't the place to start spitting about it, but Oh, let's do it. People like the banter. Let's well, the, get this idea of like it's going back to busyness versus simplicity. Yep. Correct. Right? And yep. You know, you look at all of the amazing like successes and success that all the guests we have like that have ex- achieved and there's periods of their life that are very busy. Now I know we can get into semantics like busy versus productive versus efficient. I'm kind of just grouping it all together in saying they worked their asses off. Yep. Right. And yep. then there's, they period- were busy, they were efficient and they were getting shit done because they had to. Yeah. Yep. And for anybody that doesn't know the four seasons of life, I very much recommend that you go listen to Jim Rohn, go to the library when they open and get Jim Rohn books or go definitely buy it off Amazon or wherever else you buy books from. So worthwhile to understand the seasons of life. And we were talking about that, Mike and I, before this podcast started, is that to, to what season of life are we in now and what does that look like and how long do we have to be in it for? And do we actually want to be in that season? We can be conscious on that. We yeah. don't just have to let it be because, you know, somebody else tells us that. Yeah. And I think about that, especially this time of year coming into the holidays, you'll, you'll get various uh, people telling you their perspectives of, you know, it's the final month of the year. Don't take your foot off the gas. You, you want to go into the new year as hard as you can gain all that momentum. And that can be true if it's true for you. And then there's the other, other side of the coin where, you know, take some time off, enjoy some rest, relax, you know, and if that's true for you, that's also fine. And it's, I think like the magic comes in, in accepting that, you know, like honoring whatever your truth is, like you said, not, not doing the same as someone else just because they're doing it. That's correct. Like Mike and I, even from our two perspectives, we're quickly figuring out, right? We're in same spots and different spots. And that is completely all right. Mm Mm-hmm. Mike and Rosalie, you guys are going through your business ventures together. Candace and I, as we're going through our business ventures, as long as we're communicating it, we have to honor each other's perspectives. And from there, we're going to get further ahead together. But it doesn't happen if we don't communicate. It doesn't happen if we don't respect the other person's perspective as well and take it in when they're giving you shit. Yeah. <laughs> it makes for, I mean, it makes for fun times. And again, we said this awesome. in episode 10. As long as the core values are aligned, which they are, these little, um, whatever we want to call them, disturbances, hiccups, miscommunications, whatever, whatever you call them, they're just bumps in the road. You know, you know the and main direction. I think, you know, one of my colleagues, they're bumps in the road that have to happen. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm learning more and more. I've learned this in the last few months from working with her, and we're going to have her onto the podcast. She doesn't even know it yet, um, is how do you disagree with each other and how do you present that and how do you go forward together and it's from having those very straightforward real conversations that actual true progress happens because as mike said earlier success is not a straight line even though we all wish that was the case it's just not reality yeah not at all no sweet so are we done pontificating for 2020 i think so i mean um you know, as we're kind of kind of closing up here, one of the things we dropped the ball on was we said we were going to go live uh, in Q4 2020, and we were like, "Oh wow, we're down to the wire." So with that, we're gonna we are gonna go live. We're gonna go live in our own way, uh, December 23rd. That's the Wednesday. So instead of having a podcast, um, we're actually taking the last two weeks off of a regular podcast. But December 23rd, we're going to do uh, Ask Mike and Jonathan Anything, Rum and Eggnog Edition, right? So if you <laughs> we want. Sure, I told that to Candice last night. She's like, you can't do Rum and Eggnog. And I'm like, just because we have to do Rum and Eggnog even more. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, you, the guests can come on 
doing whatever they want. I'm going to be drinking a rum and eggnog. I got a beautiful uh, Christmas sweater that I like to wear. Uh, you know, it's, it's something special. What did we, we said we were going to do? December 23rd at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Mountain, 5 Pacific, 7 CST. T8 yep. Eastern, and we'll put it up somewhere so you don't have to remember that. So that way, um, what did, what did my coach tell me one time? Uh, if you want to clean your house, invite someone over for dinner. And it's like, there we go. We 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 know we need to go live. We'll put it out there, and now we have to. That's excellent. And I have one ask for our group. I asked Mike if I could do this before the recording today. We're 20 episodes in. Uh, you hear it on all podcasts, you hear it on YouTube, uh, artists and what they're doing. I think coming into the end of 2020, if there's one thing we could ask, it's the first ask for myself personally within this podcast format so far for the Veterinary Project podcast is please click on wherever you are listening to this podcast. Give us a rating. Uh, we have more and more followers. We really appreciate it. Uh, we've not asked this once in the last 20 episodes, but if you can click on the like button and or give us a rating, if it's one out of five and we suck, we'll take it just as much as if it's five out of five. Be real with us. That's, you know, again, um, something that we've on purpose not wanted to do is make big asks. This one for coming into the end of the year, 20 episodes in, I would ask if you could do that for us. It'd be fantastic. Uh, we're looking forward to, you know, producing more content for you getting live in the community. And again, we have more stuff coming up into 2021. Yep. So with that, enjoy the rest of 2020. Let's get through it for all the good and bad that it's been. And thanks again, guys, for coming on the journey. Thank you for listening to the Veterinary Project Podcast. As a recap, on behalf of our hosts, the Veterinary Project Podcast will be releasing new episodes weekly. So be sure to tune in as we bring you more conversations aimed at helping you enjoy a life well lived. If you enjoyed what you heard on the show and you want to stay in the know, please like, love, and or subscribe to the podcast on the listening platform of your choosing, as we're available on all the usual suspects. If you know of others that may benefit from these conversations, we'd love it if you please share the show with them, as this will help us grow our community to reach more and more veterinary professionals. Speaking of which, if you are a veterinary professional and would like to get connected with more like-minded individuals who are joining us on this journey, please send an email to the Veterinary Project Podcast at gmail.com, and we'll invite you to be a part of our private Facebook group. General feedback, requests for information, or perhaps requests to be a guest on the show can also be sent to the Veterinary Project Podcast at gmail.com. Dr. Michael Bug and Dr. Jonathan Light, thank you for listening to the show, and we'll catch you again next week for another episode of the Veterinary Project Podcast. Bye for now. Bye for now.